In this video, I'm going to talk about a better way to deal with callbacks in AJAX calls and jQuery. So I recently learned how to do this. Um, and even though it's been out for years, it's one of those things where I was just so used to a certain pattern that I never considered that there was a new way of doing it. So this new way, or it's not new anymore, but this different way of doing it is by using promises in jQuery. So I'm going to explain what those are, but first I want to show you what I have set up here so we can see what's going on. So I have three files. I have this jQuery example. It's just two routes. The index is going to return um, an HTML file and then this Ajax test route is going to return a JSON that says Ajax call complete. And the reason why I put that there is so I can alert it in the JavaScript. This layout is fairly straightforward. It has um, jQuery here. It includes the ajax.js file that I'm going to show you next. And it has a button that I'm going to bind a click event to to demonstrate the two Ajax calls. Then finally, I have this ajax.js file. Uh, my button dot on is going to be the event handler that I'm going to uh, use and then I have these two functions. Success test is the way I've been doing callbacks in jQuery and then promise test is what I'm going to use from now on. So first let me show you success test just to demonstrate it. Um, basically I'm calling this URL. Uh, I'm expecting JSON to return. I'm going to post to it which matches up nicely with here. It's a post. And then when it completes successfully, I'm going to log to the console success test and I'm going to alert the result, which is Ajax call complete. So let me put that in the um, event handler. Save it and then I refresh the page. And by the way, I've already started the server for Flask, so that's why I have this up. So I'm going to hit test. I should see success test in the console down here, and I should see a pop-up saying Ajax call complete. So you see success test, Ajax call complete. So this works. I have the callback uh, directly in the Ajax call. But the problem with this is <clears throat> uh, this callback and this Ajax call are they're kind of stuck together. If you watch my video on separating the data in the Ajax calls, it's a similar thing. Uh, the success callback depends on this particular Ajax call and this function. I could pass in a callback here and just have success do it, but there are other callbacks that I could uh, possibly have for this one Ajax call, like complete and error. And if I wanted to do it that way, I'd have to pass in three different functions. So the new way I'm going to do is by using promises. So an Ajax call returns something called a promise. And a promise is in a pending state until something happens to it. In our case, it either completes successfully or it fails. So <clears throat> when it completes successfully, we can do one thing. And if it fails, we can do another. And if it hasn't done anything yet, like it, if it hasn't completed, then it will still be pending. So let me show you an example of this. <clears throat> first thing I'm going to do is create a variable. I'm going to call it promised and it's going to be the result of promise test. So this Ajax is returned from this function. So I'm going to return um, this promise to this variable promised. And as I do that, this Ajax call gets initiated. So not only does this promise variable uh, get the promise object, but the Ajax call begins. And then the second thing I'm going to do is promised dot done, and I'm going to have a function here. So this done method on the promise object is analogous to the success callback in here. They hap they occur in the same cases when the Ajax call completes successfully. Uh, the success callback gets fired and the done ob uh, done method on promise gets executed. 
So here I'm going to do console.log um, promise test. And then I'm going to alert data.result. And I didn't pass in the data. It's very similar to success. I just have to have the data there. So let me refresh and run it. So now I have promise test and I have Ajax call complete. So you see these two versions of the code do exactly the same thing. So why would you want to use this one? Well, this one allows you to separate the Ajax call from your callback. So here you run the Ajax call first and then you attach any callbacks you want to it later. And you can attach callbacks as late as you want in the code, even well after the Ajax call has completed. So if I decide to wait 30 minutes for some reason and attach another done to promise, it will run immediately because that promise object has already completed. So that's just an introduction to promise objects in jQuery. I'm going to cover more methods on the promise object in a later video, probably the next video. So thanks for watching.